All right, guys, we got lots of people joining the webinar today. Let's get this started. Oh man, thank you so much for joining this virtual experience. I'm really loving these webinars. I'm getting to reach a lot of, lot of people and give them some great information. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about stress and mood. First things first, this is up for grabs. So CanPrev has uh, donated these products. One person is gonna walk away tonight with this wonderful lineup. And we're gonna be talking about all of these things today. I could talk about this stuff all afternoon, evening for you guys on the Eastern side of Canada. A uh, little bit about me. I'm Dr. Rory Gibbons. I'm a naturopathic doctor in British Columbia. I'm a father of two little guys. One's six month old, one's three years old this month. Oh my gosh, time is flying by. A um, little bit about my practice. I love functional nutrition and how micronutrients affect the biochemistry in the body. It makes sense to me. <laughs> straight up. It just makes sense to me when I learn about this nutrient working in this pathway and it does this thing or this effect. I love it. Um, I'm a speaker. That's why I'm here. And I am an author. I've written some articles uh, for magazines uh, across Canada and in the States. <clears throat> I'm a husband. Um, as I said, I have two little guys. Love getting out on the bike. I live in a really great place in British Columbia for road riding. Uh, so I like getting out and doing a nice cycle, getting kind of colder, but it's all good. Um, I am the exclusive chef at home and I love Star Wars. It's one of my go-to <laughs> go movie nights um, when I'm, well, when I get a chance. I'm not passed out by nine o'clock. And sitcoms. I'm a sucker for sitcoms. So let's talk about stress, okay? Uh, my gosh. I say a hot topic this year in 2021, but really it's like a hot topic in 2020, late 2019, 2020, things are ramping up. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, a little bit more so in the last couple of years than normally for a lot of people. And I, it's really sad to see that. And it's, it's totally valid, no doubt about it. Um, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about it a little bit more and get an idea of uh, what is going on in the body and what we can do to help. So this pandemic has really had an effect on our mental health, economy, relationships, schools, um, rates of addictions, anxiety, depression, metabolic dysfunction, meaning like blood sugar dysregulation, obesity, uh, it's increased. And a large part has been due to the stress of adapting to the next, to these changes that we're going through. So let's break down what stress is, okay? Stress is how the body and brain respond to any demand, okay? So any type of challenge, such as performance at work or school, significant life change, pandemic, or a traumatic event can be stressful, okay? Stress, stress puts us into a state of nervous functioning called sympathetic or commonly known as fight or flight. We're gonna to touch on this a little bit more on the next, uh, next couple slides here. But the stress isn't all, stress isn't all bad. So eustress with an EU right here uh, is a stress that is positive, motivating, and enhances functioning, okay? So it's usually not considered a, a, a classic stress, but is sometimes labeled as incentive or motivation, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Exercise could also be considered a eustress uh, unless you see it as a punishment. So <laughs> that's a whole, that's it different ball of wax. Usually in this situation, like in a new stress situation, the energy provided is proportionate to what is needed in the situation. While in distress, the energy is excessive or unusable. That's a key thing, unusable. Now distress, we kind of alluded to it. This is, these are the stresses that, that tend to like stress people out. Okay. Distress tends to cause people to feel overwhelmed, anxious, and to experience physical and psychological symptoms like headaches, tension, insomnia, inattentiveness, or irritability. Anyone feel like this sometimes maybe? Yeah, right. Probably a little bit more frequently lately. So to reiterate, distress um, is excessive or unusable in the situation. Let's break it down a little bit more types of stresses, okay, macro stresses, toxic work environment, toxic relationship, something that's like larger in your life that is, uh, that is stressful and stressful commute even, 
um, smaller stresses called micro stresses, essentially tiny little assaults throughout the day. It's like this cumulative effect where these tiny little things are, are getting at you and just building and building. Um, for example, someone not showing up on time could be stressful, like a micro stress, coffee pot not turning on, that could be stressful. Uh, partner not doing something that you told them that needs to be done, those types of smaller stresses that can add up. Here's a little, here's a little something I wanted to bring up and I like statistics. I don't, I like to, I like statistics as far as like transferring information to people, but I don't like this, this statistic. So among the age group of people 25 to 44, the proportion screening positive for major depressive disorder increased from 18% in the fall of 2020 last year, this time to 23% in spring 2021. And the proportion screening positive for generalized anxiety disorder increased from 15 to 20%. So that's an increase of 5% in both categories, anxiety and depression, over five months. That's a large, extrapolated out to, a, um, to the population of that, that age group, is that's a lot of people that are screening positive for those mental health conditions. And that's scary and it's sad. And, there's a lot of things that um, I can do to help those people, but also a lot of things that clinical counselors can do, psychologists can do, psychi um, psychiatrists can do, your GP, like there's lots of things that there's lots of support for these people. So for both time periods, proportions of positive screens for at least one disorder were higher for younger age groups relative to older age groups. So it sounds like the younger age groups are not, we're not. Um, adapting as well. Uh, so let's talk about stress hormones a little bit more biochemistry kind of lingo. All right. So fight or flight versus rest or digest. Now, without going into too much fine detail here, when we experience a stress, new stress or distress, fight or flight hormones are put into action to deal with it. All right. Good or bad stress, fight or flight hormones are, are present. Specifically, cortisol and epinephrine or norepinephrine. This is also known as adrenaline. That's kind of a, what, another word that people use. Um, we can't label hormones as good and bad. So that being said, cortisol is often referred to as bad. Okay, it's only because we make it that way. <laughs> okay, we don't do a good enough job at regulating our stress, allowing our body to rest and repair. Then we blame cortisol and call it names. <laughs> Basically, it is literally just trying to do what we are trying to do, that we want to do. It's trying its hardest. I also want to bring up the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Um, this is a hormonal pathway that activates cortisol release from the adrenal glands and is actually not a part of the sympathetic nervous system. Mind blown. I bring this up because we will be talking about nutrients and herbs that support the adrenal system versus the nervous system. Okay. So catabolism versus anabolism. The reason why cortisol gets a bad reputation is because of its ability to break down tissue. So when cortisol is secreted chronically, it actually can degenerate certain tissues. It sure does a good job of controlling inflammation as well. Okay? Anyone recognize the words like hydrocortisone, prednisone, cortisone injections? These are catabolic drugs. They break down things. So they do great things as well but they also break down things. So anabolism, uh, the opposite means building up. And this happens when we are in a rest and repair phase of nervous activity. Some other words that come to mind here, sleep, calm, meditation, Zen, yoga, peace, forest time. We'll be talking about in a moment. And lastly, on this list, let's talk about like short-term stress versus long-term stress, because these are different. Humans, are beautifully designed to handle short bouts of stress, but we really struggle to manage chronic and repetitive stress. In short, acute situations, our body handles a stressor with a release of cortisol and epinephrine. And when it's over, those hormones decrease and we go back to our rest and digest situation. But this isn't what we experience now. We experience negative stressors constantly and chronically, and cortisol is secreted at a moderate to high amount for longer than what we are designed to do. Okay, the brain then recognizes the high amounts 
for longer and the level of cortisol hanging around is telling the brain okay we don't need that much we don't need that much cortisol anymore so the release of mother hormones from the brain are dampened all right this doesn't mean that we're going into a level of adrenal failure like addison's disease that's not what we're talking about that's an autoimmune disease um but it's just the level of cortisol is coming to a level or a moderate to high level brain is saying oh man there's a lot hanging around we need to down regulate the cortisol release from the adrenal glands that's is, this is when we get you know chronic fatigue um lack of motivation depression sometimes like things like fibromyalgia even anyways we're going to talk about some some ways to support these systems here's a nice i love these i love flow diagrams so stressor happens it elicits a, it turns on the hpa axis and the sympathetic nervous system so cortisol versus epinephrine and norepinephrine oh sorry i'm looking up at my big screen let's look down here so now you see my face better um and then you know we talk we see the effects here so glucagon um, insulin decreases, you know, increased blood glucose goes up. There's, so there's this chronic, like elevated level of blood glucose. This is after behavior. I think this is supposed to say altered behavior, uh, immune suppression. Okay. This is an interesting one. People that are stressed out for long periods of time, immune system doesn't function as good. All right. Uh, and then we look on the other side of the page, uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine, the main increase here increase blood pressure usually because there's an increase in heart rate so lots more like beats are going up uh, and then we also have an increase in blood viscosity and one other thing i wanted to add there was uh no that's it those those two things those two things go up and the if you think of the blood and the mean uh, the blood in the blood vessel it's thicker and there's more in there and your pressure is going to go up so we've that's not a very good thing to happen later. <laughs> Medicine that supports the cortisol pathway. These are called adaptogens. Very appropriate word for adapting to a stress. Medicine that supports the nervous system over here are called nervines. We're going to talk about both of those things and what, what uh, nutrients those uh, fit into those categories. Okay, stress, distress, more in particular, makes everything worse, especially our mood. I wanted to write down some more words to show people that these are very, very normal and common. Okay, if you have these things, don't write them off. If you have something, you're like, oh, I'm jittery. Oh, it's probably just because I ate something. Maybe not. Maybe that's the symptom that is coming out um, from your chronic stress, okay? <clears throat> Some things that have been coming up in my practice lately, irritable, lonely, explosive, impatient, jittery, and of course the classic anxious and nervous and sad and depressed. Let's connect the dots. Another flow chart. I wanted to make this just to kind of illustrate, it's a very, very like uh, simplified diagram, okay? These are some areas these are some um, effects of chronic distress has okay hormone changes can lead to anxiety and depression nutrient depletion because we're trying to deal with the stress can lead to sleep disturbance um, and anxiety depression so these are the the ingredients here that help with sleep okay magnesium melatonin we talk about that later anxiety depression magnesium bees 5-htp we burn through those things when we are trying to deal with the new stress. <clears throat> Every patient I have, I ask them about their stress. Okay, it's such a player in our physiological tissues. And it often invokes a clinical example or a clinical pattern. And an example here that I wanted to bring up with you guys um, is gut issues. Okay, so stress makes you have altered bowels. That's very known. Okay, the altered bowels make you nervous to attend certain events, which invokes a feeling of anxiety, which contributes to your overall stress. <laughs> that sucks. That's a vicious cycle right there. So it's very important to kind of to be clear on 
Um, is it the stress that's causing the IBS or is the IBS causing the stress? And which one do we need to tackle first? When you come and see me, I usually deal with both. Uh, someone just raised their hand there. Uh, if you have a question, go to the Q&A box and ask it there. Uh, just write it in there right now. That's totally cool. Uh, lifestyle addition. So what can we do here, you guys? Like, what can you do every day? Here are some suggestions that you can start doing right now or as soon as this webinar is over. Nature time, okay? I was just talking with a, a, a GP doctor friend of mine, and she said, recently, uh, doctors have been prescribing nature time. <laughs> like, that's fantastic because research has shown that uh, by your cortisol levels can start regulating or lowering within 30 minutes when you stand beside a tree, okay? So I've been prescribing nature time to pretty much everyone since I started practice um, because there's plenty of scientific data to support this. And <clears throat> this is not new. This is, came out of Jap Japan uh, called Shinrin Joku. And there's books and books written on it. So I encourage you to look it up and like read those books on this practice. <clears throat> breathing. When we take part in breathing exercises, we activate something called the vagus nerve. It automatically starts pulling us out of that sympathetic state and pushes it in, us into that parasympathetic state. <clears throat> Just the idea of breathing and thinking about your breath, lowering the diaphragm, breathing into your belly that is initiating the vagus nerve, okay? <clears throat> Physical activity. Notice I didn't say go work out, okay? Working out at a gym or home can be daunting to many people. You may not even know where to start. And yeah, so if you feel like your current level of activity is low, then it's time to get out and go for a walk. Uh, time to start adopting the 10-minute walk rule. <clears throat> Strength training, great way of uh, improving stress levels. And if you want to take that up, I highly recommend a good personal trainer to help you start that journey. Just to kind of get you set up and make sure you're moving in the, in the, right, in the right way. Digital data intake. So this is something that is really prevalent right now. Lots of screen time for a lot of people. And there's an endless scroll of information that spans from positive uplifting content to very controversial and sometimes hateful messaging. <clears throat> Just witnessing that can be very stressful. It's very easy to get caught up in the social media frenzy. So I've been certainly suggesting to my patients and friends and family to try to unfollow people on social media when they feel triggered in a negative way. Just unfollow them. Don't get me wrong. It's important to pay attention to certain updates in your area, uh, but trying to limit the destructive noise is, is very helpful. <clears throat> Uh, less screen time, kind of tying into the last point there, when there's less screen time in your life, you are exposed less to digital data intake, okay? I'm not just talking about scrolling on social media, but talking about watching TV, all right? This is an escape for people, but it's not helping overall. It's taking away time in bed and rest and probably taking away time with uh, people. That's what we need right now. Um, blue light from constant screens also can alter cortisol and melatonin function, especially in the evening light sees blue and suppresses the melatonin um, release in the brain. Melatonin is what helps us sleep. <clears throat> Journaling is another thing that we can uh, start implementing that can help with uh, alleviating stress. It doesn't have to be the stereotypical Instagram image of like sitting down with a coffee and a plant while diffusing essential oils and no kids around. Okay, that'd be lovely, but not always reasonable. Okay, it can be done in three to five minutes if time is an issue. <clears throat> three things you're grateful for, one thing you're excited for today, or one thing you're proud of that day if you do it at the end. The simple, it's just like the simple act of writing something down on a paper is actually therapeutic and makes you think a bit harder. And there's that intention. Speaking of intention, intentional thinking. Um, I like to say intentional thinking versus meditation. <clears throat> Maybe that's just my, <laughs> I find it in uh, meditation intimidating, but I need to get over that part and actually uh, um, <clears throat> kind of pursue that a little bit more. Simple act of thinking about a breath in versus a breath out activates that vagus nerve. All right. Talking to a friend, 
reach out to someone who is open-minded and has proven to be a good listener in the past. Okay, chances are they could benefit from some honest chats too. <laughs> if you're struggling to think of someone that you can talk to, always uh, counselors are available, lots of online counselors right now. They're trained listeners and they can help you get through some difficult times and, and emotions. And lastly, super corny, do something that brings you joy. I know it's corny, but it's so true. This doesn't mean do something that the internet says should bring you joy. It's usually something that maybe you did as a kid or young adult or something that you've always like really, really wanted to do. <clears throat> I wanted to add in a few like simple dietary hacks here. Uh, sugar. Okay, for a lot of us, we crave sugar when things get tough and it enters into our diet with a vengeance. Zero to a hundred. But when we inject sugar into our diet in a large amount, we alter our ability to deal with it. And it, this can create mood shifts. Okay, so two things come to mind. Three things come to mind. Uh, we get a blood sugar crash, which can come in the form of lightheadedness, irritability, anger. Okay, we get an energy crash. And that looks like lack of energy and motivation, which then leads to less exercise, less outside time, et cetera, et cetera. And three, people can sometimes feel jittery, anxious, and nervous. <clears throat> so this usually happens with the person who is dealing with some sort of anxiety to begin with, diagnosed or undiagnosed. Caffeine. Oh, sorry. Let's talk about how like sugar solutions here. So some easy ones. Start decreasing the existing sugar in your diet. Okay. So added sugar in the coffee, the hidden cookies in your cupboard, or the bag of candy in your car or office that no one knows about. If you don't buy it, then you don't eat it. <clears throat> You can have it once in a while, but let's start bringing it down a bit. So I'm a big fan of something called Smart Sweets. Uh, they are stevia-based candy. They kind of, they remind me of fuzzy peaches, like those peach rings. <clears throat> they taste a little bit different, but still it can curb your sugar craving. Uh, caffeine, pretty simple here. Caffeine, as we all know, is a stimulant. So if you're someone who is more on the anxious side, this may push you a little further into the anxious feelings, all right? Uh, some caffeine solutions. Start having half decaf or decaf in the afternoon if you're a coffee drinker. If you have one in the afternoon, like have a decaf, have a, yeah, have a half decaf or, or a full decaf coffee, find a good bean. Or you can replace one of your coffees with a green tea and then eventually like a herbal tea. So you kind of decrease the caffeine a little bit more. So comfort food. I love this one. Um, because I, uh, I love comfort food. <laughs> okay. First thing that comes to mind is burger and fries. Uh, that's, I love a good burger and fries once in a while. So the thing with comfort food is that usually they are very carbohydrate dominant. <clears throat> Other ones that come to mind, macaroni and cheese, pasta, heavy cream sauce, cake, cinnamon buns. You get kind of get the picture. I'm not saying don't have these things, but think about how you feel afterwards. Okay, so most likely you are going to feel lethargic, heavy, full, bloated, etc. Um, if this is you, just keep that in mind that you're going to be feeling like that. And when that time comes, it's, it's okay. Like, it's okay. You knew this was going to happen. I don't think anyone has that meal and that reports feelings of elation, energy, uplifting mood and motivation. <laughs> I wish it was true. Hydration. This one ties into energy quite tightly. So water has a major role um, in many chemical reactions in our body, especially in our energy producing pathways. Being hydrated moves digestion along, helps blood flush out metabolites from organs, lymphatics, muscles. Not enough time to talk about hydration and all of its wonderful benefits. Uh, whenever I'm tasked with talking to an audience about a topic, um, I usually look at the situation the way I look at a patient. So every situation is unique. And there's usually never one thing that is causing the concern, okay? So more often than not, the situation needs a holistic approach in order to see long-term improvement. This is why I bring up the outside time, the lifestyle additions, some of the dietary kind of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the dietary uh, modifications, okay? And this is what I appreciate about these products, the holistic nature of them, the combination of ingredients are used to target specific pathways to achieve a progress. And sometimes when you use like, uh, depending on the person, one, each one of these products, sorry, depending on the person, there's a product here that is going to help them. Let's talk about adrenal chill first. Super cool. Uh, this is a combination of KSM ashwagandha, KSM 66, which is the patented type of ashwagandha, <clears throat> and L-theanine. So 
both adrenal chill and adrenal pro both contain adaptogens. And this might be a new word to you, but basically it's something that provides a normalizing effect. In other words, it's something that provides the body what it needs in order to combat any sort of stressor without causing much of a shift in normal functioning, okay? So adrenal chill, like I said, made up of ashwagandha and L-theanine. So let's talk about ashwagandha first. Ashwagandha is an excellent, excellent example of an adaptogen. It normalizes daily diurnal cortisol release. What the heck does that mean? Cortisol is supposed to be high in the morning and low in the evening, but because of our lifestyle and our stress in our lives, cortisol can kind of creep up and stay high throughout the day. <clears throat> we suspect that a constituent of the plant is mimicking a hormone um, called GABA and GABA reduces cortisol. So that's how it kind of starts putting the cortisol release into a lovely diurnal pattern. <clears throat> KSM 66 ashwagandha, very well researched type of ashwagandha and has shown to be really benefit people who have symptoms of higher than normal daily cortisol. Okay. Like that I was saying high levels of cortisol. Really interesting. This is grown and harvested in India by what is called a farm to table integration. So the farm owns the farm. So they own the farm and the production of the ashwagandha. Very common in Ayurvedic medicine and is used in people of all ages. So let's talk about some, some results from some studies. Um, in one study, there was a 22% drop in serum cortisol after only eight weeks. That's two months. That's not that long of taking a product every day. Uh, it helps to preserve vitamin C in the adrenal glands. That's really important because we dump vitamin C when we are chronically stressed. <clears throat> Reduces subjective measures of stress by about 33%. Study on anxiety showed 88% reduction in anxiety symptoms versus 50% in placebo. 88% reduction. That's a pretty big reduction in anxiety symptoms. Those people must be feeling a lot better. Um, and lastly, sleep. Ashwagandha has shown improvement in sleep quality over eight weeks. And we know that sleep has been proven to reduce anxiety and stress. That's a time to rest and re reset. So most likely due to the improvement in, the, in that cortisol release throughout the day. <clears throat> KSM 66 doesn't just end there. There's lots of research on other things like male and female fertility. Um, yeah, and, and other, and lots of other um, areas of health. L-theanine, amino acid that is used to induce calm and mental clarity. So without making you feel sleepy though. Okay, so by itself, this is a great nutrient for calming the brain down, providing some thought clarity before activities <clears throat> that require mental work, such as this presentation <laughs> or an exam or maybe like a, a really busy day at work <clears throat> where you need to focus and be calm. And, you know, take this about 45 minutes to 60 minutes before you start your, your task. <clears throat> so what does it do? It gets absorbed into the bloodstream, crosses the blood brain barrier and puts our brain into a more of an alpha wave state versus a beta wave state. Okay. Beta wave is more of a, a nervous and um, sympathetic state. <clears throat> the term that comes to mind here is a restful wakefulness. Okay. So maybe to give you an example would be the state that someone would be in during a meditation session. So you're, you are calm and your mind is calm, but you aren't falling asleep. <clears throat> also increases dopamine and GABA in the brain. And when this happens, people feel less fear and stress. I think there's a lot of fear and stress in people's lives right now. <clears throat> L-theanine can also be taken on, taken, uh, on its own, but I often see people needing an adrenal support with L-theanine at the same time. Common question, can I take this before bed? Is it going to keep me up? Uh, yeah, you can definitely take adrenal chill before bed. Uh, Adrenal Pro, super cool, really great list of ingredients in this one. Um, formulated for someone who's like kind of chronically tired, who needs a mental pick me up, because <clears throat> it hits the uh, energy systems from a bunch of different ways. Uh, when we take this combo of nutrients, we can we can uh, um, anticipate an increased energy level, reduction in stress and fatigue, uh, improved sleep, enhanced sense of well being. It has this thing called L-tyrosine in it, and it's sometimes referred to as the stress amino acid. So why do you ask? 
because dopamine and epinephrine are literally derived from this amino acid. Okay, so the amino acid is very not, if it's not present, the production of those stress hormones, it'll be limited. And we can't, then we won't be able to deal with whatever's going on. It also makes thyroid hormone too. Vitamin B5 found everywhere in the body. That's why it's called pantothenic acid, pantos meaning everywhere. Um, and especially found in our energy producing pathways. <clears throat> KSM 66 is in this as well. Uh, ashwagandha, sorry. Uh, it acts to mimic, mimic GABA, which controls the cortisol. Okay, Siberian ginseng, uh, also known as Eleuthero, reduces fatigue and improves endurance and combat stress. So really cool thing about this herb is that back in the 70s, this herb was heavily utilized in Olympic athletes, okay, because it's a physical effect. But then later, it made its way into the Russian cosmonaut program because, it's effect, because of its effect on focus and mental clarity. So this is a pretty amazing little herb. Shizandra, uh, very cool herb, very cool name. <clears throat> when you eat one of the Shizandra berries, uh, it will contain all five flavors, bitter, sweet, acrid, sour, salty. Uh, because of that, it's considered a harmonizing tonic, tonic. So it can really kind of push you back into this neutral. Gives you a feeling of energy too. So that's always nice. Rhodiola. Super cool. Actually the fastest acting adaptogen and we can see improvements in burnout and fatigue often within a week. Um, this is a, one of my go-tos when I was in school for exam periods because it helped my focus a lot and it helped it quick. That makes sense because studies on ER docs and military cadets showed increased capacity for mental work and less fatigue. That's a good thing in, in when, you're doing ER, when you're in the ER and military. <laughs> So it, this is something that would be really, really good for someone who's stressed like right now. I love the addition of astragalus. I usually think of astragalus as a deep immune herb where it's stimulating white blood cells um, at the level of the bone marrow. I like the herb in this combo because the stress often takes a toll on the immune system. Okay? So in other words, it dampens the response. It doesn't, doesn't like shut the immune system down or anything. It just dampens the response. So providing a herb that is going to uh, improve the white blood cell production. That's a good thing. Vitamin B6, uh, more of a central nervous system rather than HPA axis uh, addition here. <clears throat> One cap twice a day. It'll do your body good. B vitamins. Oh man, like, okay. I have a good story about B vitamins in a moment. Um, as we talked about earlier about adren adrenal chill, we know that L-theanine works to put our brain into a calmer alpha wave state. I think that's a great addition to this group of B vitamins because they're working super hard to convert food we eat into fuel for energy production. <clears throat> B vitamins all work together as cofactors in biochemical reactions to create energy. And I remember the, the moment that biochemistry and nutrition came together for me. And it wasn't until after my first degree and into my naturopathic doctor degree someone showed me a complicated diagram of molecules and enzymatic fractions. Instead of saying, this is converted to this with the help of NADH, they said, this is converted to this with the help of vitamin B3. And it just blew my mind. So if you're thinking NADH, I've heard of that before. That is actually B3. <clears throat> Crazy. That's where I guess my, my love of functional nutrition kind of started, I guess. B vitamins are water soluble, so they need to be replaced daily. And okay, so you certainly get these vitamins in your diet. But we need to keep in mind that often vegetables and fruits that we eat are not what they used to be, okay, due to farming practices, processing of food. Every time a food goes through a process, we lose some nutrition and to add, they are being grown in a nutrient depleted soil, probably, okay? And to add more, we are stressed out. So we are using B vitamins up at a higher rate than ever before. It sounds like it's a losing battle, but it doesn't have to be. This is why I recommend B vitamins to basically everyone. And it's a huge reason why B complex and B vitamins are a common component of most nutrient IV infusions. Usually done by naturopathic doctors. <clears throat> uh, take it with food. Yeah, on an empty stomach may cause some discomfort. I uh, like this, like, oh, feeling of malaise. Yeah, take it with some food. Supports a lot of things. I love talking about this next mineral. It's called magnesium. Everyone's probably heard of it. 
but not all magnesium supplements are created equal. And there's plenty of research to show that they all do different things. <clears throat> okay. So today we are going to talk about these two. So here's kind of a spectrum of some magnesiums that have research done on them. Um, today we'll be discussing a very well absorbed and utilized form called magnesium bisglycinate. It's a smaller magnesium form that is absorbed into the bloodstream via the gut and acts in many, many different areas. One, it is my go-to magnesium for sure. In the body, about 65% is in your bones and 30 to 40% is in the soft tissues and only about 1% in your blood. So it's actually kind of hard to test magnesium accurately in the blood, in, in the blood because so little is found in the bloodstream. <clears throat> so let's compare uh, magnesium bisglycinate to magnesium oxide because that's a very common one you see on the shelf. So a common form found in milk of magnesia. And we all know what that does, okay? It's a laxative, okay? It draws water into the colon and then you have a bowel movement. This type of magnesium, not very well absorbed and therefore stays in the colon. We don't get much of that magnesium that is that we're taking in. On the other hand, magnesium bisglycinate works to relax the musculature of the colon. So that can help with constipation. Magnesium is highly needed in our body. Um, highest concentrations, we talked about that. <clears throat> Usually in the bones. I didn't mention it's in the heart, in the muscles, and the nervous system. Okay, Works to keep our heart rate rhythm steady. It promotes proper relaxation of muscles after the contraction. So contract, it's relaxing. That magnesium is helping to relax. Uh, helps metabolize blood sugar. Ensures nerve fibers fire well. Uh, promotes regulation of blood pressure and that works right on the arteries themselves <clears throat> activates vitamin d like helps to mitigate pain in some situations and of course helps create cellular energy which is very relevant to today okay so every single one of these symptoms here can come from chronic stress <clears throat> and i've seen it both in myself uh, but in most of my patients. So when I give them magnesium bisglycinate, they almost always have a reduction in at least one of these symptoms. And I think I'm speaking conservatively when I say that. I would put money on it that most people here listening have experienced one or more of these symptoms in the last week. And this is why almost all of my patients go on magnesium uh, or I suggest magnesium bisglycinate for them. <clears throat> it's not always bisglycinate, but... Usually that's the one that I go with. Magnesium product that you see right here delivers 200 milligrams of elemental magnesium. There are, other, there are two other straight magnesium products from Canfra that have less elemental magnesium. Um, there's a 140 milligram dose and an 80 milligram dose. These ones usually a little bit gentler on the gut, more well tolerated in people with sensitive stomachs that have IBS maybe, stomach acid issues or even like autoimmune diseases such as Crohn's and colitis. The great thing about magnesium is that it will go where it is needed and you can't overdose on it if you take it orally. That being said, please just talk to your, your naturopathic doctor about how much you should be taking. So you don't wanna be like taking a bunch and then not utilizing it. Uh, the body has a checkpoint where it stops absorbing magnesium and it just gets extruded through the bowels. All in all, probably my favorite mineral, hands down. Take it every day, usually at nighttime. And I tell you why. One second, boom, here we go. Magnesium and GABA and melatonin. What a, what a dynamite combo for people that are not good at sleeping <clears throat> or have more complicated sleep issues. And I use magnesium as kind of a first line defense against kind of uh, poor sleep and then add in GABA and melatonin later. <clears throat> so two people come to mind that may need this product. So people who can't fall asleep usually takes them about two hours longer than most other people. And there are people out there like that. And I'm, my heart goes out to you and you're lying in bed. Like I lie there for an hour or two hours, whatever it is. That sucks. Like, let's fix that. People for one reason or another are not following a usual circadian rhythm. So maybe someone who's trying to get past some jet lag or someone who's on a night shift worker. Um, this is a go-to for my night shift workers for sure. I mentioned briefly a moment ago that, that magnesium can help with sleep as its own. So it actually plays a role in supporting deep restorative sleep. As a human race, we need more deep restorative sleep. 
So it maintains healthy levels of GABA, which promotes sleep, okay? Melatonin is fast acting and it'll put your mind and body to sleep. And then the magnesium will help to keep you asleep by activating GABA, <clears throat> okay? GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Okay, in other words, it's a molecule in the central nervous system that acts in a calming nature. It doesn't turn other things off, but actually just acts to calm the nervous system down. Oh yeah, so for those of you that are wondering, hey, what the heck is Trax right here? <laughs> uh, it's a patented technology that combines the minerals together, the, the magnesium and the glycinate. Okay, it's called the real amino acid chelate system. <clears throat> T-R-A-A-C-S. If you wanna learn more about magnesium, I encourage you highly, go to magnesium.ca. This is the Canprev magnesium site. Uh, so much great information on here. Go to this website, download the PDF primer on magnesium. You're going to learn something for sure. Vitamin D. So let's talk about the super common good old vitamin D. <laughs> it's a buzzword, not a buzzword. It's, a, it's very prevalent in social media circles. If you're kind of in the healthcare algorithm in social media, people have definitely been talking about vitamin D. It's an important fat soluble vitamin as needed in so many ways. Specifically right now, I see vitamin D helping in two kind of grand ways, supporting our immune system and supporting our mood. <clears throat> Basically, everyone can benefit from taking the daily vitamin D, especially if you live in Canada. Now it's getting darker earlier and getting lighter later. Um, get it tested if you're not sure. And of course, like consult your doctor if you feel like you need more than what's on the bottle. Uh, the test you want to run is uh, 225-OH vitamin D. Canprev's D3 made in a liquid and capsule form and is 100, and it's 1,000 IUs per cap. And recently, there is a, a Canprev D3 that is 2,500 caps or 2,500 IUs per cap or drop. So that's exciting. <clears throat> Again, consult your doctor if you feel like you need to take more than <clears throat> one or 2,000. So D2 versus D3. So when you're sourcing out a supplement to take, very important to pay attention to if it's a D2 form or D3 form, okay? D2 synthesized in plants, mushrooms, yeast, and used to use like four to five foods and some other supplements. Um, <clears throat> the problem with it, it's not, it's poorly absorbed and utilized, okay? It's too much, the, the body has to work too hard to use it. D3 is the form that is made by the body when sunshine hits the skin. So it's readily absorbed when taken internally and the body has to do very little in order to use it. So to help in the absorption, Canprev has encapsulated little vitamin D molecules into capsules of organic coconut oil. And it's stable, enhances absorption of, of D3, but also vitamin A, other, other fat soluble vitamins. <clears throat> Most D3 supplements are made from lanolin. You heard that right, sheep's wool. So if you are vegan, then you may want to source a different, a, D, a different D3 product. There are some lichen-derived D3s, and I think there's some algae-derived D3s, but the potency is not as high in a lanolin-derived one. <clears throat> yeah, vitamin D deficiency, common denominator amongst people with depression, for sure. I see this often, and it's one of my go-tos for people that kind of deal with uh, seasonal affective disorder. But we got to remember something like depression is a multifaceted situation and vitamin D3 isn't always a silver bullet. Okay. So that being said, if it doesn't help a ton with your mood, then it's probably helping in a different way. <clears throat> D3 also can talk, come with uh, K2, uh, vitamin K2, which is another fat soluble vitamin K2 great addition because it helps with bone density and dental health. Basically it, what it does, it takes the calcium that's floating in the blood and redirects it to the bones and teeth instead of the kidneys and arteries. That's a good deal. All right, so last product, last but certainly not least, this is really, really cool, beautiful flower. I wanna talk about saffron in the product called Healthy Mood. <clears throat> it's a gem packed little capsule. Basically everything in it I've talked about already besides the saffron, I haven't talked about that yet. So what a cool and beautiful ingredient in this product. Just look at the, the color on these stigmas, these red pieces here. <clears throat> Who's this good for? 
people with low mood and or feelings of nervousness, okay, you can benefit from taking this. It aims to bring you back to uh, neutral. So anxiety, depression brings you back right to the middle kind of neutral uh, function. <clears throat> Certainly the main ingredient in this product is saffron uh, and the other ingredients work to have a harmonizing effect on mood via a few different pathways. We can see <clears throat> there's 5-HTP and GABA in this too. But let's first talk about the saffron. The saffron we use is top notch, is grown in Iran and processed in France. And the part we use is called the stigma. This is the red part. <clears throat> in the world of saffron grading, the one that is used in this product is the highest grade and it's called Sargol grade. It's extremely rich in active metabolites. And we know that when we used, um, when used together, they are more effective than when used in isolation. These are the constituents of the stigma that I'm talking about, okay? Saffron grown in Iran has the richest stigmas compared to other saffrons grown in other areas of the world. And the, the history of use of this herb, it's really amazing. It dates back 3,000 plus years ago, uh, mainly as a food colorant and additive, but also traditionally in Persian and Indian Ayurveda for its calming, hypnotic, and antidepressant or anti-anxiety properties. <clears throat> so it's used traditionally, but also supported by modern, modern trials. Uh, the attention that saffron gets is in people that have mild to moderate depression, okay? So there hasn't been research done on major depression. <clears throat> Clinical trials have shown that saffron has been shown, <laughs> sorry, I said shown a bunch. It's been shown to be as effective as some leading pharmaceuticals in its class, okay? Namely, imipramine, fluoxetine, for mild depression. Noticeable results happen after one week. Main results happen in around six weeks. So really not that long. Uh, for stress and anxiety, saffron works at dampening the effect of cortisol and mitigating the long-term effects of chronic stress via their potent antioxidant profile. Pro tip here, next time you're in the grocery store or in a garden, look at the flowers, look at the colors of the foods. And if they are vibrant and bright, most likely high in antioxidants. <clears throat> For depression and mood, they have a similar action as some antidepressants in that it works to block the reuptake of serotonin. So that's kind of how a lot of antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications work. They block the, um, excuse me, the degradation of serotonin in the synaptic, um, in the, in the synaptic cleft in the nerve, <clears throat> allows serotonin to work. Uh, saffron has also been shown to maintain dopamine and helps promote GABA action in the brain. And as we know, those two things make us feel better. It's great because it kind of hits mood from a bunch of different angles. <clears throat> just a few, just a fast summary on the other, other ingredients. Um, these are integral ingredients. They act in the brain and they deserve way more attention than what I'm going to give today. Okay, so 5-HTP, they're there to help create more serotonin as it's a direct precursor to the creation of serotonin. All right, GABA, main inhibitory neurotransmitter that produces a calming effect in the brain. We talked about that in some other products tonight. Um, the other vitamins and minerals added to this product have been shown to be supportive in making antidepressant and anti-anxiety medications more effective, okay? <clears throat> they do other things, but they also support the antidepressant medications ability to work. Just a note on B12, it's essential for the biosynthesis and metabolism of serotonin, <clears throat> amongst many, many other things. <laughs> Instructions, one cap, three times a day. Shouldn't make you drowsy. <clears throat> We've talked about a lot of stuff tonight, you guys, and I flew by again. So a quick little summary here. Stress, pass, stress pathways, uh, we talked about at the beginning, stress states, uh, hormones involved, cortisol, epinephrine, uh, norepinephrine, we connected the dots from stress and how it leads to your mood change. Talked about some lifestyle and dietary additions, you know, things like getting outside, standing beside a tree, you know, trying to mitigate your caffeine intake, work with your ND, like see someone about this stuff. Um, and even if, you, if it's not really prevalent right now, if you're feeling like, oh, stress isn't really a big thing for me, I don't think it's dealing with my mood, like talk to someone anyways. Preventive medicine is important. Uh, and then we talked about adaptogens, vitamins, minerals, saffron. <clears throat> so this leads me to one question for you. 
what is one thing you will do for yourself after this webinar? <clears throat> Just one thing to think about. So for me, one thing I'm going to start doing more often is writing in my planner, intentional thinking and gratitude, three things that I'm, I'm excited about, three things, or sorry, three things I'm grateful for, one thing I'm excited or proud about. <clears throat> it was so easy and I just dropped off the, I just, I just stopped doing it for no apparent reason. So I'm going to try to pick that back up because I was feeling good after I did that. So give Camp Prep a follow on Instagram and Facebook. They have some excellent content and excellent, um, <clears throat> Excellent, uh, excellent content on there, not just product related. Like there's some great recipes, some great um, drink recipes for their other products. And you can find me here. Give me a follow on Instagram, reach out, say hi, tell me I, you know, uh, tell me that you um, saw me on, on a webinar. I'd love to hear from you. And you can check out my website <clears throat> and write me an email if you want. That's cool too. Virtual Health Collective is a little, uh, is a company that my wife and I started and as a virtual ND practice. Thanks so much for listening tonight. This is so good. I got some questions. I'm going to read them right now. So let's hit the Q&A box. Boom. Let's bring this down. <coughs> uh, first question early on here. I'm going to try to answer all the questions, but if I can't, uh, we're, someone will get back to you. Or you can... Um, you can email canprev at info at canprev.ca. Is there a way to change your mood from distress to you stress? Yeah. Um, that's a, I mean, that's a loaded question. We talked a lot about uh, improving your stress overall, but moving from distress to you stress, that sounds like a mindset shift. Okay. Like instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I have to drive to work in this crappy commute you could potentially think this is an opportunity for me to listen to a podcast that is going to help me with X, Y, and Z. That's one thing that you can maybe do. Um, is there a difference between stress and anxiety or are they the same thing? That's a great question. And they can kind of coexist, right? So anxiety, I always see as a symptom of stress or symptom of something else going on. So that flow chart I, I, showed you where distress happens and then uh, a nutrient depletion happens or um, <clears throat> excuse me or or exercise intolerance happens and then uh, a, a mood uh, an emotion happens okay so they're not I would say they're not the same thing but they can be coexisting that they, they are coexisting anxiety is a symptom so is being in a state of fatigue all the time a sign of stress if like one feels tired all day, even though they have a good night's sleep and didn't do much physical activity throughout the day. Yeah, this is something I see all the time. And waking up tired sucks because like I slept eight to 10 hours and I'm still tired. So this is, this is a, so being in a state of fatigue all the time is a sign of probably of chronic stress. <clears throat> and you need to work with someone that can look at your thyroid, look at your iron levels, look at your cortisol levels, um, naturopathic doctor would be excellent to talk to about that and then provide lifestyle solutions similar to the ones that I talked about today. It sounds like you're needing some rest, some restorative support. <clears throat> Is there an easy way to find out which products would be best for your specific needs? I get overwhelmed with all the products, ingredients I've never heard of before. Absolutely, Ashley. There is, <clears throat> the question should be, who should I see to figure out your specific needs? Okay, not which products, who should you see? I know it'll be a little extra out of your pocket. Maybe you've got some extended benefits. Um, someone that can guide you in your needs, okay? Is GABA safe for people with anxiety or epilepsy? Um, I'm, I can't talk about epilepsy, but anxiety, yeah, it's safe. We just got to make sure that um, that being said, there can be some possible interactions with medications. Okay. So you know, that, that's going to be a question for your doctor. I don't know what, uh, medications you're on, <clears throat> if you're on, a, on any, cause there can be some situations where anti-anxiety medications can compound, even though GABA is a different pathway than a lot of anti-anxiety medications, they can, the effect can be compounded. Is ashwagandha good for low cortisol or fatigue? 
Yes, kind of. It's good for um, reestablishing the cortisol uh, pattern throughout the day. I wouldn't use cortisol for, or I wouldn't use ashwagandha for a, a, a all day low cortisol. Okay. I would use something more like an adrenal pro where there's some stimulating herbs there. Um, but we also need to look at those lifestyle situations. Why is your cortisol so low and what are we doing to restore that? Okay. And what are we doing to um, stop pushing you towards this low cortisol and fatigue, right? Got to take you out and give you some restorative <clears throat> um, actions. What are the side effects of a GABA overdose? I think the question is, what are the signs of a GABA overdose? Uh, like fatigue, like a bad overdose uh, is like a, it's like a, a complete dampening of your nervous system. Um, yeah, I'd have to, that's a, that's a bigger question because it can, it can look a little bit different. <clears throat> I can get back to you on that one, Natalie. Susan says, I've tried the adrenal chill and many products that contain ashwagandha. However, I can't take any as it causes extreme fatigue. Have you heard of this before? And why is this happening? <clears throat> I don't know why it's causing you extreme fatigue. It's usually, um, you may want to switch up the herb. Yeah, he may not be good with ashwagandha. I don't know why it is, why that's happening to you. Maybe someone from Camp Rep can get back to you on that. <clears throat> can we give it to hyperthyroidism, adrenal chill, or ashwagandha in specific? Uh, yeah. Ashwagandha. I'm just going to talk to ashwagandha and hyperthyroidism. Well, first of all, we got to get, we got to deal with your hyperthyroidism. First of all, so why why is hyperthyroidism happening? Um, adrenal chill may be helpful in the treatment um, <clears throat> in supporting the treatment of hyperthyroidism because there is a there is an adrenal kind of uh, what's the word a parallel a parallel uh, physiological phenomenon that's happening when there's hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. Treat the thyroid, treat the adrenal system. Susan also says, can we give ashwagandha before bed? Yep, for sure. Can pregnant women use adrenal pro, adrenal chill and pro? <clears throat> um, I don't, ashwagandha, I believe ashwagandha is, no, I'm not gonna, I'm, not, I'm gonna say no. I'm not going to say no on that until proven otherwise. I don't treat a whole lot of pregnant women, so I don't know uh, the, the herbs and their effects on pregnancy. Okay, so I can't say yes for that one. A great, uh, a great resource for pregnant women <clears throat> is a website called Kelly, something Kelly. If you Google Kelly adrenal, sorry, Kelly pregnancy ingredients or something like that, you'll get a good uh, resource for, um, <clears throat> for that. Which is better for menopausal stress, adrenal chill or adrenal pro? Uh, menopausal stress. So there's also estrogen and, <clears throat> sorry, estrogen and progesterone and testosterone things happening there. So we want to address that. So I would probably go with uh, adrenal chill there, okay? Can customers using antidepressant use the adrenal chill and pro? I don't see why not. I have to double check all the ingredients in, in uh, adrenal pro, but I think it would be probably fine. But of course, check with your doctor first. <clears throat> Is L-theanine safe for people that are taking antidepressants or antipsychotic medications? <clears throat> is theanine safe for people that are taking antidepressants or antipsychotic medications? I believe, I believe it's okay. But again, talk to your doctor about that because depending on the medication, because they act in different pathways, 
the L-theanine could be additive or could be um, antagonistic, okay? Can you comment on vitamin B injections versus supplements? Yeah, for sure. So specifically, let's talk about vitamin B12 injections. Those are the most common that I see. Um, they both work. One is $45 and it's a high dose. The other one is a lozenge, okay, or a, or a capsule. They both increase your, your um, vitamin B12 levels in your blood. <clears throat> one just gets it there quicker than before. The great thing about vitamin B12 is that there's, there's not really any data to suggest that taking too much um, can have a negative, uh, like a negative outcome. But what's the point of taking a whole crap ton of B12? <clears throat> I love B12 injections. And there's also B complex injections, which hurt. <laughs> I don't, I never did, did them because people always complained about how they, um, they hurt. That's intramuscular B12 injections and intramuscular B vitamin injections, B complex injections. Uh, intravenously, <clears throat> intravenously, those things don't usually hurt as much. B12, uh, the B complex injections don't hurt as much. Can excessive use, overuse of ashwagandha cause stomach upset? Was the max dose for the day? Uh, it depends on what type of ashwagandha you have. Um, it can. I don't, I've never really seen it cause stomach upset. Uh, if it is causing some stomach upset, take, take that with, uh, with some food. Max dose for the day depends on what form it's in. Is it okay to take magnesium when someone has IBS? Yes, it is okay. And if you're one of the constipated IBS people, definitely, if you're taking it, if you're more on the diarrhea side of IBS, taking a more gentler type of IBS, like the 180, uh, 40 milligram or the 80 milligram dose would be, would be good. <clears throat> what is the normal rate of D3 when you are getting uh, tested? If your body does not absorb D3, how much should one take? Your body does not absorb D3. So what normal rate, <clears throat> uh, the, I believe the normal, the normal range, I'm guessing, is the question is upper limit is 150, lower limit is, I believe it's, I think it's like 60. I like to get people between 90 and 110. If your body does not absorb D3, how much should one take? The recommended uh, daily, um, <clears throat> recommended daily allowance for vitamin D for Health Canada is, is 1,000 IUs per day, I believe. Uh, Natalie, that answers Natalie's question. Since you formulate with the patented clinically proven KSM66, are you also using the patented clinically proven L-theanine and GABA? I don't, I don't think that there is a patented L-theanine and GABA, is there? I don't believe that these products have patented L-theanine and GABA. There's tons of information on L-theanine and GABA as individual nutrients though. <clears throat> Victoria asks, would you advise not taking the magnesium with melatonin and GABA every day? Is this particular formula for an, on an as-needed basis? Yeah, that's a great question because I, I kind of split that up into, um, I kind of alluded to taking this for jet lag or, or the other thing um, <clears throat> for uh, night shift workers. You can take this every day. Uh, melatonin, I personally, in my clinical practice, I don't use melatonin every single day with patients unless not sleeping is causing more harm than using two and a half milligrams of melatonin. Okay. I'd also like to know why you're not sleeping. Camille says, what symptoms should I watch out for to determine whether or not coffee uh, is okay for me? determine whether or not coffee is okay for me. If it jazzes you up, if it, if it, if it makes you jittery and you're like, I can't sleep, we need to dial that caffeine down. Um, like I said in the presentation, like if you're someone that is kind of more on the anxious side, then let's be mindful of how much caffeine you're having, okay? 
in terms of exercise for stress reduction, what are your favorite recommendations, specific weightlifting, pre-workout? Oh, like specific um, supplemental rec recommendations. <clears throat> a really great product that I like personally using is called muscle recovery or muscle, re muscle repair, muscle recovery by Innovite. Uh, it's, a, it's a branch chain amino acid product. <clears throat> a branching amino acid product with leucine as the most dominant amino acid. As far as adaptogens, ashwagandha is good, Siberian ginseng as well, green tea, EGCG is good. How can you increase serotonin? Uh, yeah, we talked about this a little bit earlier, you know, nutrients such as 5-HTP can increase serotonin. Um, just be careful taking this if you're on an anti-anxiety or antidepressant because <clears throat> you can kind of have a combination effect. That's one, that's one way. I mean, magnesium also helps increasing serotonin. Um, L-theanine puts you into a, a more of a calm state, not really doing the serotonin thing. A big thing, Tracy, healing the gut. <laughs> healing your gut. If you have a bad gut, uh, we need to heal that up and mitigate your, your symptoms uh, because a lot of serotonin is made in the gut, like 80%-ish. So let's get that gut figured out. Uh, I believe ashwagandha is a nightshade food. If I have issues with nightshade veggies, should I avoid this? Is it a nightshade food? I don't think it's a nightshade food. Maybe it is. Um, depends on what your issue is. If it's like an allergic issue, yeah, there's other things that we can use for sure. Um, the thing that I, I understand about nightshades is that the part that gives you an issue is in, the, is in the skin of the nightshades. It's called a lectin that can give you an issue. <clears throat> I don't know how to answer that one. I, I don't think it should be an issue for you. All right, so that's all the questions from the question and answer spot. I hope I answered them, I answered them to the best of my ability. I believe uh, lots of 99 plus things in the, <laughs> definitely can't give adrenal for pregnant now. Don't give, don't take the adrenal. Okay, awesome. Okay, it looks like all questions have been answered. If you feel like your question wasn't answered, um, uh, good enough, like please get in touch with Canprev. <clears throat> get in touch with Canprev at uh, info at canprev.ca or social at canprev.ca. Thank you so much for attending this webinar tonight. I really appreciate your time. And um, yeah, please like get in touch with me if you want and um, answer and you can even ask me some other questions or just say hi and give me some constructive feedback as well it's always appreciated thank you so much guys have a wonderful night